are constantly looking for upgrades. Unless, of course, we're married. Other than that, we're looking for upgrades. We want to see, am I behind? Am I missing something? Is there something better? Well, that's our thought. Those are our things that we need to think about today as we consider what this passage tells us about better. The book of Hebrews, if you had one word to summarize the book of Hebrews, let me give that word to you. Better. Twelve times it is used in the book. And if you're looking for something to study, just to have an idea of what to consider, I would tell you, go look at the word better in the book of Hebrews. We're going to do it all day today, but think about and notice everything that God says. Better. This morning, we have a better covenant And then tonight we'll notice that that covenant is built on better promises. We begin with the idea of this better covenant, and we begin in the book of Jeremiah. In a text that has been read many times, I've looked at it many times trying to figure out some things within it, but I have an idea that I want to share with you. Jeremiah 31, beginning at verse 31, we find out how God said there is coming a better covenant. He promised it. He prophesied that something better was coming. We begin in verse 31. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and also with the house of of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers when I brought them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke. Though I was a husband to them, says the Lord, this is the covenant that I will make in those days with the house of Israel. I will put my law in their minds, and I will write them on their hearts, and I will be their God. They shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord, I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. God said to his people, I have made a covenant with you. I was your husband. I gave you a covenant. We were in league together, but you broke it. But I'm sending a new one. And it's not like this one. It's better. This new one is a better covenant. God said, I'm going to do something that I've not done before. It is better. It is a covenant that he was going to make. And it's going to be in their hearts and in their minds. And then third, he said, and they won't be able or won't need to teach anybody because everybody will know me. Well, there are some things that are maybe difficult to understand. Number one, I get it when it's not like the original one, it's better. But number two, I write it on their hearts and on their minds. I think I get that. Because as the people of God thought about the law of God, they remember Moses coming off the mountain and the God's law was written on tables of stone, tablets of stone. And later, the scribes would write it. And so for them, the law of God was in written form. It's over there. It's over there. Go over there and read it. And every week... On the Sabbath day, they would gather and the priest would read the word. So it was to them over there. But now I'm going to put it in your heart and in your mind. But then third, he said, they won't need to teach. Well, that sounds odd because Jesus said, I want you to go teach. So it can't mean that. What's he talking about? Here's what I think. 
they will all know me from the least to the greatest. I think that verse is teaching this potentially. In this better covenant, they will know me. They will not just know of me. In this new covenant, God lived with the people in a more personal sense. When the Jewish people considered God, they said, there he is. You see the temple over there? There he is. You see that most high, holy place? There he is. And you see the high priest going in once a year to that place? He goes and meets God over there. But God said, it's going to be better. And you will know me because I will be with you. You will know me. You won't just know of me. So this idea is that God said there is something better coming. Number two, it is better because of Jesus. The Hebrew writer begins by saying in the text that was read for us, Jesus is better than the angels. Oh, I know he's better because he was not created and he's God, but he's not talking about that. In that text, he's talking about Jesus becoming the Son of God. He is better when he came to mankind and brought what God wanted him to bring. The text says he had a better inheritance than the angels. It was the angels who came to man often in the Old Testament and brought God's will or God's law. But when Jesus came, he was the law. He was the word. And the way he fulfilled it and what he did with it gave him an even better inheritance. God said, he's better. He's better because, chapter 7 and verse 22, he's a better guarantor. In other words, because of him, you can trust everything that's written right here. Because Jesus came, lived, died, rose again, and went back to heaven, you can trust everything that he said. Everything. He guarantees it. You don't have to be concerned about that. And third, he's a better mediator. Chapter 8 and verse 6. He's a better mediator. In other words, the one who stands between the people and God. Every year the high priest went to the most holy place. And took blood from a sacrifice and sprinkled it on the mercy seat. And he stood there in that moment between people and God. But what could he do? He didn't do what Jesus did. Because when Jesus came... He stands now between us and God in a way that those priests, those mediators never could. Jesus is a better mediator. Now, how is the New Testament better? One of the strange things... At least it was to Paul and to people who wrote in the New Testament. It was strange to them who, to find or to hear about people who were going back into Judaism, leaving Christianity. They couldn't understand it. 
Why would you want that? When we were living in St. Louis area, there was an elder who had a couple of children, and they were older, and I knew some of them, knew them at Freed Hardeman. And not long, I think it was after we had moved, but right in that time to come here, his eldest daughter, who had married and raised a family, the two of them decided to leave the country and to take up residence in Israel to become Jews. I don't get it. I don't understand it. Paul couldn't either. In fact, he said of his people to whom he wrote in the book of Galatians, I'm afraid of you because you want to observe days and months and Sabbaths and years. What's going on? In other words, why do you want to go back to that system of rules and regulations that nobody could keep? Why would you want to do that? When this covenant is better. When you leave today, I want you to know intellectually. And I want you to adopt it in your being. That this covenant is better. Because of what it offers today that was not offered then. Number one, it is better because it is for all people. God does not play favorites. I don't care who you are today. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what your connections in life. I don't care how you failed. We're all equal today. With God, he doesn't play favorites. And in Romans 11, in verse 27, God made the statement that he was going to bring this new covenant, not only to the house of Israel. In fact, he said, the fullness of the Gentiles is coming in. So that God was going to bring this new covenant to include, as he said in the text, so all Israel will be saved. Wait a minute. I'm not of Israel. So God's now got a new covenant and he's going to save all the Jews. It's not what he said. All Israel. Because he first said, Israel, waiting for the Gentiles to come in. Because in the new covenant, every Christian is all Israel. In fact, the book of Galatians says that the people of God are the Israel of God. What's he saying? God wants all Israel to be saved. He wants all of us to come be a part of his spiritual Israel. God doesn't play favorites. He wants you. Number two, it's better because it removed the curse. The curse. The curse, uh, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 10. The curse that existed on every single person because they did not keep the law. And cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Jesus took the curse away. The better covenant is effective. The better covenant is effective. It takes the curse away. It is necessary 
that we find a way to remove the curse that came from the beginning of time when God cursed the earth and mankind with penalties because of sin. But in the new covenant, the better covenant, the curse is gone. Because in Romans 8 and verse 1, God said, There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You're not cursed. We're not cursed. Oh, we live in a world of the consequences of the curse. But Jesus has taken the curse away in the better covenant. It's a better covenant because there's only one bloody sacrifice necessary. Just one. For millennia, two of them. The people of God every day offered bloody sacrifices. There's no way that we can understand what they went through. The smells, the sights of blood covering the ones who slaughtered the animals. A constant reminder. We are cursed. We are under sin. The better covenant came along and said, Our sins have been removed. In the Last Supper, Jesus, in Matthew 26, in Mark 14, in Luke 22, said that this cup is the new covenant of my blood that I have shed for you to take away sins. This covenant is better. Because trying to live by the other one, your sins would not be taken away. But we are under a better covenant. It's about remission, not remembrance of sin. This is better. And because it is better, I want the better. I want to be a part of the better. Don't you want to have the better? Don't you want to have your sins removed? The one who's already, we've shown, had sins removed in baptism, anyone today can too, because that's what it does. It brings you into the family of God. Maybe you want to do that. But number four, it's better. Because it emphasizes the spirit of the law, not the letter. 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 6. What is he talking about? In the new covenant, God's grace is abundant for every single person. And his grace overflows. It's about the grace of God. Allowing me to continue to live even though I sin. Allowing me to have the opportunity to be forgiven. That's the grace of God. And the spirit of the letter is about understanding God, not just following checklist rules. God said this is better. And I want you to have it. Number five, it's better. Because also in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he talks about the event when Moses came off the mountain with the law of God. And his face, because he had been with God, was so bright, the people couldn't even look at him. He had to wear a veil to dim it. Or they all needed sunglasses. Something had to happen. And they put a veil over him so they could look. And God says and uses that event right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And he says, the new covenant takes away the veil. You know why? Because the veil is about blindness. They couldn't really see. 
everything that God had for them because the better covenant hadn't come yet. But as the passage continues and says, for in Jesus, the veil is taken away. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. This is a better covenant. Because without the veil that causes blindness, we find real freedom out of the bondage into real freedom. But finally, this covenant is better because it's the last one. It was intended to last. The old covenant was not intended to last. It was not going to be the final thing. But this one, the last will and testimony of Jesus Christ. This is it. I don't have to be concerned that God's got something else for me that I don't know about. I don't need to teach and be looking for something better because I've got what's better. You know how it works in English, right? Good, better, best. And you might think, well, wait a minute, this is not just better, it's best. God even used the right grammar. You see, better is the term you use when you're just comparing two things. Best is the term you use when you're comparing more than two things. God only had two things. He had a covenant in the Old Testament. He had a covenant in the New Testament. And this one's better. And yes, it is best. So if it's better, why didn't he start with it? Because the old law served a purpose. The old law said, you can't live by a law system. I got something better. As James would say, he who keeps all the law and fails in one point, is a law breaker. Therefore, guilty and worthy of death. This is not a law system. Oh, there are laws of God. But this is not a law system. It's not about checking boxes and making sure I do everything exactly right and trying to figure out because in that way, I'm trying to save myself. But through the new, better covenant, through Jesus and the grace of God and the spirit of the law, I have a better life than I ever could have had back then. Oh, but didn't Jesus say, to whom much is given, much will be expected. Today, we have much. And it's better and therefore, he expects much out of you and me. If you're ready to be a child of God, if you're ready to live better as a child of God, can we not help you today while we stand and sing together? Oh,